Welcome to a code report lead code solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem four from lead code contest 70 entitled swim in rising water. The problem states on an n by n grid, each element at ij represents the elevation at that point ij. Now rain starts to fall. At time t, the depth of the water at ij is the maximum of t and the value of that element. You can swim from one square to another adjacent square if and only if the elevation of both squares individually are at most t. You can swim an infinite distance in zero time, and of course you must stay within the boundaries of the grid during your swim. You start at the top left square, and the question asks what is the minimum amount of time until you can reach the bottom right square. So let's take a look at an example. So here is our grid, uh, the dimensions are five by five, and we are gonna start in our top left-hand corner at zero. So basically the problem states that the rules of the game are you're allowed to move from one square to an adjacent square, that's one above, below, or to the left or right, if it has a, a value that is at least equal uh, to each other or uh, less than the current value that you're at. So at the beginning, because the value is zero and the two adjacent cells have values greater than it, we can't move anywhere. But at time one, any element that doesn't have a value of at least one, their value will become one. So at time one, this is what your grid will look like. So now we can move in between uh, the top two uh, elements or uh, squares in the top uh, row of the board. And so at time two, you'll be able to move through the first three uh, elements in your first row, so on and so forth. So time four, time five, time six, uh, time seven. And so the question is asking, at what point in time can we get from the top left element to the bottom right element? So if we continue doing this, the answer would be at time 16. So this would be our solution. So initially looking at this problem, you might think, well, let's perform that operation on our grid. And after every time step, we can check to see if we have uh, a solution, a path that goes uh, from the top left to the bottom right. However, we can think about this problem in a, in a different manner. And that's that, uh, imagine we are trying to flood fill this grid, which basically means uh, move around the grid and see how many uh, spaces or how many moves it takes to get from uh, one grid to another grid minimally. Uh, so uh, imagine this starts at zero, then this would be one, one, this would be two, two, this would be three, 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 um, except we're going to make a modification to this uh, flood fill algorithm. And that's that we're always going to process uh, the element with the lowest value. So we're going to make use of a priority queue uh, and basically make that a min heap and we're always gonna process uh, the element that has the lowest value. So what that would look like is you're gonna initialize your priority queue, uh, push onto it your top element in your top left-hand corner, uh, and then we're going to pop that off and look at the adjacent uh, elements. So we'll push those onto our queue, and uh, because it's a priority queue, if we set it up correctly, it'll always have the uh, lowest values at the beginning. So that'll be what we process next. So if we continue to do this, uh, we'll move and we'll process uh, the element with the one in it. Then we'll look at the two and 23, push that on, uh, and we'll continue to do this. So the next one we'll look at is the two, then we'll add the three and the 22 to our priority queue, pop off the three, continue to do this until we get to 16. And when we're at 16 at this point in time, now we need to make sure that whenever we're uh, pushing a value on, that we are uh, basically in an, another grid that we are keeping track of which elements we've looked at. We're always storing the maximum of the values that we've seen so far and the next value. So when we have, uh, when we're looking at 15 and 20, we're going to have to reset the 15 basically to 16. Um, and uh, note that when we're pushing this into our priority queue, we're going to be pushing not just the value, but also the, uh, the row and column of where the value is at. Uh, and so after this, we'll push on the 16, 20, pop off the 16. And if we continue to do this algorithm, we'll end up uh, with this formation. So we'll only have checked 
the uh, elements in yellow and as soon as we have calculated as soon as we filled a value for our bottom right hand corner because we're only sequencing the uh, processing the elements with the lowest values uh, we know that we basically have our minimum uh, path so let's take a look at the code so in uh, we'll look at the left at, uh, to begin with here is a struct which just basically contains three values uh, the value of the elevation uh, and the x and y for row and column and we uh, overload or we define our uh, less than operator uh, such that our priority queue and we define it is going to be a min heap so it's going to push the values that are the lowest to the front of the queue um, these two structures, if you've seen my videos before, are just for offsets. It makes it easier when you are trying to add the adjacent elements to your priority queue. And this is a simple function to make sure that we're not, never going out of bounds when we are checking our uh, adjacent elements. So if we come to our function now, we're just storing n so that we don't need to type grid.size over and over again. We uh, declare our priority queue uh, with the template uh, type being our struct. And the first thing we do is we push onto it the top left uh, element. Then we declare a 2D vector uh, in the same size as grid and we initialize everything to be negative one. Uh, the first parameter in this constructor is the size of the vector and the second parameter is the uh, initialization value for each element in your vector and uh, we uh, set the top left one equal to the value in grid so that we know that we've already processed this then we come into our loop and we're going to loop until we have stored a value in the bottom right uh, uh, element of our done grid and uh, we do basically what we set what we showed in our visual uh, example so we're going to pop off the top element of our priority queue uh, then we're going to loop through uh, the four different adjacent elements so the one above the one to the left the one to the right and the one below it if it's a valid element meaning it's not outside the grid and it hasn't been processed before we're going to come inside here we're going to make sure that we are storing the value of that element to be the maximum of the previous value and uh, the actual uh, elevation given to us in the grid once we've done that we're going to push this into our priority queue so that we will uh, process it when it needs to be done and then we will fill uh, our done grid with the value that we calculated two lines above and if we continue to do this uh, we're going to end up at the correct uh, solution in our bottom right corner at the element n minus one n minus one which is the element in our bottom right hand corner and uh, this the complexity of this algorithm is simply going to be uh, the size of your grid, which will be n squared. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button.